All right, so it's been about 30 minutes and I just wanna show you what my setup is looking like. So as you can see, I have my Cheerios and you'll notice that there's some bubbles here. Um, and the bag is relatively flat, just how it was when I started. Now let's move to our second bag and look at the difference there. I'll just pan over again. This bag is very much inflated like a balloon. Um, and I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like fizzing. I'm going to get close and see if you can hear the sound. And look at all the bubbles in this bag. So this is the Fruit Loops. All right. Now let's go to the last bag. And this one, again, super inflated. You can see the bubbles in it. And you can hear the sounds. It's actually leaking a tiny bit. All right, so now let's look at our lab sheet here. I'm gonna move this box out of the way. All right, so we have our objective, our essential question, our background information, and our material. So I'll let you read over that on your own. Um, the cereal brands, we'll just write that in. Cheerios. Fruit Loops and Captain Crunch. Okay. So looking at these three cereal brands, I want you to think to yourself, which one of these cereals do you think would have more sugar? Because if you read the essential question, what we're looking for is we're looking for how does sugar affect the rate of CO2 production during fermentation. So ask yourself, which one of these three do you think would have the most sugar and which would have the least sugar? All right, let's flip over to the back. Now up here we have data. And we're just gonna make some observations. So the bag was relatively flat. Um, there are some bubbles and that's about it. The second bag, which was the Fruit Loops, um, the bag was inflated and there were bubbles. And I'm going to say that there is even a fizzy sound because that's important. Sound is a good observation. And then for number three, that was the Captain Crunch. Um, bag was inflated. Um, there were bubbles for sure. The bag actually leaked. I think there was so much, um, it inflated so much that it actually leaked. Um, so that's something to know. And again, we had that fizzy sound. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to take some time and see if you can fill this out. So go ahead and take some time, pause the video, and see if you can answer questions one through seven. Um, pause, see if you can answer it, and then unpause when you're ready to check and see um, how you did and check your answers. Okay, so now it's time to go over the answers. So what chemical reaction is taking place inside of each bag? So it's actually alcoholic fermentation. And this is done by yeast and bacteria and it is an anaerobic process that means without oxygen. And it's a way to make ATP um, when no oxygen is available in the environment, okay? 
So we have here, um, it asks, what's the chemical reaction for the process? Um, C6H12O6 is glucose plus yeast plus water is going to undergo a reaction and yield carbon dioxide, which is CO2, um, ethyl alcohol, and ATP, of course. That's the most important thing, right? We want the ATP, the energy. The reactants are, let's see, we have glucose and we have water. And then the products, that's this side of the arrow, we have carbon dioxide and ATP. Um, and then what evidence did you observe that let you know that CO2 was being produced? So two things. So one, the bags inflated. And two, the bags had bubbles. Now, if you've ever had like a fizzy drink, like um, soda or seltzer or even sparkling water, you'll know that that's a liquid that has bubbles in it. And so that's actually the same idea. CO2 is inside of the liquid and it's causing it to be fizzy or it's causing it to bubble. And so that's what's happening here. I'll just pan you over again so you can see that. So you see all those bubbles in there? That is due to CO2 production and it's creating bubbles and it's making a fizzy sound. And then of course that CO2 is causing the bag to inflate because it's filling up the bag. Okay. The sugar content was higher in some bags than others. What did you observe in the bags containing more sugar? Um, okay, so this is where I asked you before to think about um, the cereals and which cereal would have more sugar. So the most sugar, which was actually in the Captain Crunch and the Fruit Loops. And so if I just pan back over, you'll see that more sugar resulted in more bubbles and a more inflated bag. And then number seven says, what is the relationship between the amount of sugar available to an organism and the carbon dioxide that is produced? And so two of our indicators that carbon dioxide was produced at all was that the bags inflated and that the bags had bubbles. And so if the sugar, if the bags with the more sugary cereal had more bubbles and more inflation, then that means that the cereal with more sugar in it produced more carbon dioxide. And so let's put this into a nice sentence. More sugar available to an organism means more carbon dioxide or CO2 produced. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, hold my camera over this paper. Um, so you can pause here if you need to like pause it and copy down some information in case I wrote too quickly or spoke too quickly. Um, and so completing both sides of this paper um, means that the lab is completed. If you are online, just make sure that you go ahead and submit this lab. And if you're in person, make sure you turn it in to me in person. All right, I hope you have a great day.